Now this interview is, is going to be very different. I always have a lot of people on my channel ask about Canada. They ask about, you know, about getting a home out there, about getting a mortgage and also about credit. And I'm honest with you guys. I say, listen, I do not know, <laughs> but I have someone here that actually knows and her name is Siobhan Bent. So her name is different, but if you're Canadian, you probably already know how to pronounce it. For the people that's in America, you listen and you nosy like me and you want to know that it is pronounced Siobhan Bent. So thank you so much for coming to my podcast today. Thank you so much for having me, Rikita. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Hello, everyone. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself and who you help. Awesome. So as you said, my name is Siobhan Bent. It's actually an Irish Gaelic name, which mm -hmm. I'm not Irish nor Gaelic. And my mom chose the name nonetheless. Um, most people cannot pronounce it. So I try to give them a heads up in the beginning. So I have been a mortgage broker for just over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so the reason why I actually got into the industry was, you know, being the eldest of three children raised by a single mom, I saw firsthand how difficult it was. And when it when I say difficult, it was really just doing things the traditional way, right? You work, you go to work, you have to pay your bills. And, you know, there wasn't, there was never more. And so I knew that I wanted to do something a little bit different. And so when I was ready to leave the coop, I decided mm -hmm. I was going to buy instead of renting. And so it was that through that experience, I realized that I had tapped into something that my mom didn't know anything about. And um, I purchased my first property at the age of 23. And, you know, shortly after that, you know, the real estate agent was following up because, you know, the market was getting hot. And she was like, you know, are you thinking about selling? And I mean, I had just gotten into the home, so I didn't know anything about selling nor the industry. But when I realized that my property started to appreciate year after year, I realized that hmm, there's more to this. Mm -hmm. And so shortly after an opportunity fell in my lap to become a mortgage agent. And so I decided to quit my job and go in head first. And so I've never looked back since. Um, this industry has done wonders for not only my, myself and my family, but also for the community at large, right? And so when you're trying to build wealth, you gotta find different ways to make your money work smarter than harder. And so real estate was my way to do that. And so here I am 20 years later, helping you know the community at large, but after having my son about eight years ago, my business actually made a shift. And so, um, as I mentioned earlier, being raised by a single mom, I knew that I wanted to do something different. And so now that I had my son, I realized my future was also have to, was going to have to be different. And so um, I created a community called Mortgages for Moms. And so what I focus on there is really education. Because what I realized in my years of working with mortgages is that the difference between those who have invested and the those, those who haven't invested is really education. And so if I focus on education, I'm able to bridge that gap for moms who have children and desire to become homeowners. Yes, education is key. Yes. Because I'm like, I, you know, you want to buy a house in Canada. I don't know what to tell you. So this is like <laughs> educational for you guys. So I am very happy about this. So you actually help people get a mortgage. Yes. But also, too, when it comes down to credit, those are different things that you can actually educate them on, too, correct? Absolutely, yes. Because there's three there's three main components when you're trying to purchase a home that com prospective homeowners need to be paid attention to. One, obviously, is your income. Because if you're asking for a loan, the lender wants to know that you're able to pay for pay for the loan, right? The second is, is the credit, which is almost the, the heart of the application because what your credit shows a lender is your relationship with money, your relationship with debt. And so if you've had issues in the past and now that you're ready to purchase, there may be some things that you need to fix in order to get yourself eligible to get a mortgage. And so this is where I also work with clients um, because again, credit is something that we weren't taught in school about, right? We're still not taught now. <laughs> We're not taught, right? There are so many people out there with debt, so much debt, you guys, that they can't even get a car, they can't get a mortgage, they can't even get a credit card. Like, I mean, a $200 credit card. Some people can't even get a secure credit card. So that's why I created my exclusive credit membership. And it's only a dollar, you guys. So my exclusive credit membership, you guys will actually get the letters to delete bankruptcies, charge off, repossessions, any negative account that you have in your credit reports, I have the letter so you guys can get that deleted. But guess what? Just because you guys are a part of my exclusive membership, you can get all those letters, but say if you don't want to do all that work, 
I have it so that you guys can get free credit repair. So that means I will actually start working to help you remove these accounts from your credit reports. And look right here, look all the results that my clients are getting. So definitely remember, you guys can join my exclusive membership for just a dollar. And I'll have that link down below. Or you guys can text SCORE21000 and you guys will have that link. So I'll see you guys in my exclusive membership. You know, there's a little, a little bit on, the inst on, the inst on social media, but in truth, it's not being taught at school. They just, you know, straight out of college, they're, they're handing you a credit card, right? But not telling you how to repay it. And so again, with education, understanding how you can help yourself get yourself in credit ready position in order to get a mortgage is something I also help clients with. So what is exactly credit ready? So we have credit scores out here. Do you guys have the same thing with credit scores? We do. We do. Or I think we use the same system. I think you have one more system than we do, but we use Equifax and TransUnion. Oh, so the, the additional one is Experian for us. Oh, look at y'all. Yeah. Okay, y'all getting a break then because Experian is a tough cookie, y'all. Oh, is it? Okay. Yes, they don't want to do anything. They're like a hard, tough cookie. Oh, wow. Okay. So what type of credit score should they have to try to go ahead and get a mortgage? So in the ideal world, anything 680 and above. Okay. Is, is the goal, which that is not the norm, right? Most people don't have 680. A majority of people, I should say, don't have 680, but it's not it's not hard to attain. But if, it, if you're not at 680, it's not impossible. I would say in this market, the bare minimum would be 650. And if you're at 650, there may be just a little bit of things that you need to do in order to get that increased. So okay. Okay, so that's the start. So y'all need to make sure y'all have like a, at least a 680. So aim for that. And I always tell people to try to have a higher credit score because the interest rate will be lower. Is that the same for also Canadians? The truth is it actually, it can help, but it doesn't, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker. So okay. somebody with a 650 score can get the same rate as somebody with a 680 score. Okay. Okay. That's perfect then. So just make sure that you can get to that 680 mark and you'll be fine. Yeah, possibly. You options when you're at 680. Definitely. Okay. And after they get their score there, what's the next step for them? So you want to ensure that you don't have a lot of debt okay. because we, um, I know for you guys, you call it DTI. We call yeah, it debt to income. Right. We call, same thing, DSR, um, debt servicing ratio. Okay. So you, the more debt you have, the more the less budget you have so okay. you want to make sure that you're trying to minimize your debt um and ensure that you're paying it everything on time at the bare minimum okay and i know that when it comes down to debt if you have too much debt you can pay off some of that debt and it, you'll be able to get a mortgage potentially is that the same thing with you guys what what that will do and it'll help with your buying power Okay. Right? So again, that DSR, the debt service ratio, that if you have a lot of debt that and you pay off some, it can reduce your debt service ratio, which will give you a bigger buying budget. Okay. So what is a few of like your top tips you usually tell people, even when it comes down to credit? I always tell people, hey, get four credit cards, make sure you have two installment accounts. Installment accounts can be a car loan, some right. student loans right. here. Um, and then make sure that you don't have more than a thousand to two thousand dollars in collections. That's like my main thing because I know your credit score will be where it needs to be if you do that. What's your main things that you may tell people um, in Canada what they should do to make sure that they can have a good start to be at that 680 so that they can get a mortgage? So for us, if you have a 680, to have a 680, if you do have collections, that's probably why you may have a lower score, right? So mm -hmm. having collections hurts you. <laughs> yes. A, lot, a longer time to recover from it. So at any, at all costs, if you can avoid, you know, getting your account to an, a collection state, do that. But the main things I tell people um, is to keep your balances low, right? Mm -hmm. So the sweet spot is like 30% utilization, okay. right? We know that it's challenging at times, but when you're ready, getting ready to apply for a mortgage, the lower the balance, the better for your utilization, the better for your score. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you're making the very minimum payment on time, right? So when I say on time, I don't even mean the due date. I mean five days before the due date because you want that mm -hmm. payment posted before it gets recorded, right? The second thing is no credit shopping. Right. If you need a car, wait till after. If you need to, you know, get a cell phone, wait till after. Because here, just about everyone pulls your credit before they extend um, a unit to you. If you're buying a TV, anything. So you want to avoid having inquiries prior to you applying for your mortgage. Okay. And when it comes out to collections and inquiries or any negative accounts, 
that's kind of where I help my clients. I help them remove it from their credit. And you said you help people with credit also. Are you able to help remove like these accounts potentially? It's not always the case sometimes, you guys. Some accounts just don't want to go off. not always the case. But yes, I can definitely walk a client through. There is an investigation process that we can go to either of the bureaus to take care of. But they definitely, they would have to have proof that it needs to be removed in order for it to be removed. Oh, because you guys may not have like the same laws with us. Don't forget, you only need a 580 credit score to buy a home. Some people can go all the way down to a 500 credit score. So all I want you to do is go ahead and click that link for my home buying program. And I'll help you step by step find a mortgage broker or find a bank to actually give you the money to get a loan. And then I'll connect you with one of my partners in the United States. So I don't care where you at. I don't care if you're in Georgia, Texas, Florida, Wisconsin. I don't care where you at. You can even be in Cali. Go ahead and click that link and join my home buying program. Like well, our laws, if we tell you something and you don't even respond in 30 days, it's going to get deleted. But that's because we have certain laws. Right. No, we don't have those laws around. around okay. No. If they're if it's on your credit bureau um, and it's not supposed to be, then yes, you can challenge it. Like, for example, if there was fraud activity or anything like that there would be an investigation and you can work on getting that removed. But if it's an account that you've actually had and you've used and you want it to be removed or it's old and it should be removed, um, you have to have supporting documentation in order for it to get removed. And without the supporting documents, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen before the system's organic purge. So if there is an account on there that has been active for six years, Mm -hmm. organically it will be removed if it's again if it's if it's something like bankruptcy after seven years it'll be removed but if outside of that uh you have to have documentation to get it removed and think about bankruptcy i didn't even think about that so in america we have it uh, if it's chapter seven you have chapter seven and then we have chapter 13. Okay. chapter seven everything is deleted chapter 13 is where you'll pay on it for three to five years um mm -hmm. how would bankruptcy affect people out in um Canada, how would that work in Canada when it comes out to get a mortgage? Okay, so for us, we have it like how you have two options. So bankruptcy, which I guess you said chapter seven, it would be completely mm -hmm. removed. For us, bankruptcy is considered re completely removed if you're approved. Um, the alternative, your chapter 13 is called a consumer proposal for us, mm -hmm. meaning you've, negotiate, you've had somebody interject and negotiate your interest rates. And so you have a term in which you can make those repayments at a lower cost. Okay. So how does it affect in a mortgage approval? Um, if you're currently in the bankruptcy, it will be challenging for you to get approved for a mortgage. Um, we have two types of mortgages here. We have what's called a conventional mortgage, meaning that you have 20% down payment, or if it's high ratio, means that you can you can have less than 20% and get a mortgage as well, right? So that's high ratio or conventional. If you're, as I said, if you're in the bankruptcy, it'll be difficult because no lender is going to want to come into a, an existing bankruptcy. But if you have been discharged, you are able to, you would be able to, to get a proof of mortgage with certain criteria. Um, for a consumer proposal as well, a part of that agreement is that you're not supposed to be looking for credit while you're in the proposal. So you would either mm -hmm pay that out before you get approved or you have to wait till it's finished. Okay. Okay. And with our chapter seven, when everything is completely wiped off with the approval, after you get approved, is it discharged right then and there? You can go get a mortgage or is there a time period where they'll have to wait? Um, most times the bankruptcy is like a seven or eight month process, not even mm -hmm. nine months. And you, there is still a fee to it that you have to pay for. So once you've made that final payment, you will then be discharged. Oh, and at that point you can get a mortgage? You can get a mortgage. There would be different criteria, like so different types of lender that would look at you, but yes, you can definitely get a mortgage post bankers. Okay, okay, look at y'all. Okay, so y'all got fighting chance out there. <laughs> usually for us, you know, you have to wait. Everyone. <laughs> yeah, usually for us, chapter 13, you can wait one year, but even if while you are in bankruptcy, you can get a mortgage. Mm. And um, if it's well, that's chapter 13, and then chapter seven, you gotta wait two years. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You're gonna get again high ratio, so the, the better of the best mortgages, then yeah, you would that too, you would have to wait two years and you would have to reestablish yourself. Sure. Okay. Had any issues post um, to your but tradition non traditional lending you can get it the day the day of 
Okay. So after everybody get their credit together, what should they do after that in terms of contact you? What should they have together so that they can start, you know, getting approved for a mortgage? Mm -hmm. So documentation, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Income. As I mentioned earlier, if you're applying for a mortgage, they want to know that like, how are you going to pay for this? So if you're a salaried employee, you got to have your income letter, you got to have your pay stubs, um, your tax documents as well, because they want to make sure that you are filing your taxes. Um, down payment, right? We got to show where that money is coming from. So having that saved in a, a savings account or an investment account. But again, providing documentation to show where that money is. And then, of course, we've discussed credit already, making sure that, you know, your credit, that you've done the work and that you're in position to get approved for credit. To, to okay. get a mortgage. So how long does it typically take for you to actually get someone approved? And we have like pre-approval letters where sometimes a lender can give you that in less than 24 hours. Do you guys have that same thing out there? We do have some lenders that offer pre-approval letters. Um, Pre-approvals still don't give you a guarantee because not only do they have to assess you and your particulars, they have to assess the property, right? Mm -hmm. So it's still subject to lender approval, but a pre-approval for us is really an interest rate hold. And so because rates you know, can move at any time, most times you do want to secure a rate when you can. And so that we can hold that up to four months. Oh, up to four months. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at these results that one of my clients got just from opening a self account. Now this self account is amazing. So I have this account also, I paid $48 per month. And then after a year, they send me all my money back. But you know the best part, I'm saving money. And then they're reporting to the credit bureaus, all three credit bureaus every month that I'm paying on time, which is really boosting my credit score, you guys. So definitely if you don't have a self account right now, it's a installment account, your credit score is really low, get that self account. You're going to be so happy that you did it mm -hmm. and how long does it take for you to get all their documents and to see if you can actually approve them depends on how efficient the client is okay <laughs> <laughs> once i have all documentation um 48 to 72 hours i would say okay yeah because again it, a lot of the pre-work is done before an actual submission so okay. it's really contingent on how quickly the lender can respond so i would say about three four days Okay, so after they get their pre-approval, I kind of want to know the process. After they get their pre-approval, you help them with that stage. Absolutely. Then you are able to refer them over to a realtor, right? If you, if they don't have a realtor, you can help them with that? Definitely. I, as I said, I've been in the industry for almost 20, well, for over 20 years. <laughs> Still getting used to that. Um, <laughs> so I do work with several realtor partners that I can connect you with. This, so it depends on what part of the city you're at specifically if you have like you know a preference of you know whether male or female i definitely have options i can connect you with okay perfect now is there anything else when it comes down to mortgages out there that people should know like don't just come and think you're gonna get a mortgage consider this also is there anything else that we probably didn't go over that's really huge um for them to be able to get a mortgage i think it's always best to speak with a broker versus going directly to your bank, because all mortgages are not created equally, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's best to have someone who is going to go through the information and educate you through the process and ensure that the product that you are si saying yes to is something that actually works for your family. So I think that's key, being sure that you you're working with somebody who's going to thoroughly explain the process and ensure that you are not just signing the dotted line because you want a mortgage. Yes, I always tell clients, even in America, I say, hey, you should go with a mortgage broker just because you guys have more options out there, too, <laughs> compared to just if you go to your bank, you only can get what they have to offer. Yeah. Is that like the biggest thing, too, for um, brokers out there? Like That's they have so many different loans? Yes, because I have access to over 50 different lenders. So wherever you are, I can find a product and company that can match that. Again, if you go to the major banks, which a lot of people do, because, you know, we were kind of conditioned that way mm -hmm. you go to the bank because they have everything. But the truth is, banks see you as a number, right? So yes, they'll give you a mortgage, but they give you the mortgage because they want to give you credit cards. They want to give you lines of credit. They want to give you car loans. And so they make money off of you that way, mm -hmm. right? So that's not... Um, if you're trying to build wealth, knowing what your options are is always the best option. Okay. And I, one thing I did want to go over too, I just kind of remember, mm -hmm. um, some people may want to invest. I know when I was supposed to go on a ski trip out there and, um, it was a lot of Airbnbs out there. Are you able to help those type of investors too, if they want to get investment property? And we're mm -hmm. not even talking about, um, yeah, we definitely can, as I said, with having access to over so many different types of lenders, um, 
you have option, options over here again to if you're investing in that type of a property, there are lenders that are comfortable with lending on those types of properties. Okay. And how, how long does it typically take for you guys to close out a loan from like after you guys get everything, after the offer is accepted and you, you know. It depends on the property. So in, in cases where there's maybe somebody already living in the property, it's occupied. Uh, if it's a tenant, maybe they need to move. 30, 60, mm -hmm. 90 days is pretty typical for resale properties. Um, I've seen sooner, um, again, depending on, on the property. But if it's like a new construction, um, 6, 12, 18 months and beyond if it's a new construction. So it really depends on the, the property that the client's purchasing. Okay, perfect. And I always ask um, people this question. I always say, tell us about a situation where you had a client and maybe they did something wrong. You were going to close them out, but something happened, but you still came and saved the day for them and you was able to help them get that mortgage. So tell us about a time where you helped that client out and you was like playing superhero that day. <laughs> um, it was actually twofold. So this client had done two things. One, they purchased a car before closing. <laughs> and so by the look at your face, I know that that is an issue over there too. <laughs> And secondly, they had changed jobs from being an employee to becoming a self-employed person. Oh, that's the that's dope. Both those are huge. Both They're of them. Huge. Those are huge. And so the the benefit for this client was that they were already purchasing as a conventional mortgage. Okay. Right. So 20 percent. So as I mentioned, there's two types. There's a conventional, which is if you have 20 percent and if you have less than 20 percent, it would be high ratio. So had she purchased with less than 20 percent, we would have been up the creek. There would have been no lender that would have um, <laughs> financed that. But being as though it was a conventional loan, I was able to place her with a short term equity lender. Um, so they more focused on the property. Right. So her credit was great. We could show that, you know, her business, although she transferred from being an employee to self-employed, it was in the same industry. Okay. So having that explanation and the documentation to support that, that her income, um, you know, although she, she was making commission before, so it was in line um, for her purchase. We were still able to place. I had to move it, but I was still able to place it with an equity lender. That is a good example, because the first thing you said in this whole podcast is debt. You know, don't go and get a car. Don't go and get these different things. And I had a client that literally just got an eight hundred dollar payment and something on a, on a car, and that's the big problem. Now it's like, hey, now we gotta redo some things here. Oh wow! Okay, I'm happy mm -hmm. they was able to get their home though, and I'm really proud of you for everything that you're doing, especially helping moms because a lot of times, you know, it's the mom that take care of everything. It's the mom. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> We take care of everything. So tell us just a little bit about that community. How can they get into the community? How can they know more about it? And then tell us how they can follow you in general. All right. So um, if you follow me on, I'm on all platforms. Instagram is my playground, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so you can follow me at mortgages for the number four moms. And so there, you know, we have dialogue. I do go live a lot. You know, I'm in my story, so you can engage with me there. But I'm actually just about to launch a uh, home wire challenge for moms. Okay. And so if you want to be a part of that, you can go to team, no, mission, sorry, mission1000moms.com and it'll direct you to uh, my Facebook community. And so there we're going to go through day by day, you know, what do we need to prepare in order to get ourselves home ready, right? So the challenge would be home ownership made easy for moms. And so that's where you can find me. Other than that, um, if you are in Canada and you want to get pre-approved for a mortgage, you can go to mortgagesformoms.com and you'll see all of my contact details there as well. And listen, if you're a man, you want a mortgage, we got you too. <laughs> of course, of course, I help men. I mean, most of my clients, to be honest, are men. But, you know, I have a heart for moms. So that's where uh, my passion is. So mortgages for moms. Follow me on all platforms. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'm so happy we was able to do this. Yes. I, I learned so much. So I know you guys in um, Canada, you learned so much too. And if, they, if you guys have any additional questions, go ahead and reach out to her. I'm pretty sure you just drop her a message or even um, contact you via phone number. Do you have your phone number on your page? Yes. All of my contact details are on my Instagram page. Or again, if you go to mortgagesformoms.com, you can see me there too. Okay, perfect. Well, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, Rikita. Have a great afternoon.
already thank you bye bye to you also bye 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 there are so many people out there with debt so much debt you guys that they can't even get a car they can't get a mortgage they can't even get a credit card like i mean a 200 dollar credit card some people can't even get a secure credit card so that's why i created my exclusive credit membership and it's only a dollar you guys so my exclusive credit membership you guys will actually get the letters to delete bankruptcies charge off repossessions any negative account that you have in your credit reports i have the letter so you guys can get that deleted but guess what just because you guys are a part of my exclusive membership you can get all those letters, but say if you don't want to do all that work, I have it so that you guys can get free credit repair. So that means I will actually start working to help you remove these accounts from your credit reports. And look right here, look all the results that my clients are getting. So definitely remember, you guys can join my exclusive membership for just a dollar. And I'll have that link down below, or you guys can text SCORE21000 and you guys will have that link. So I'll see you guys in my exclusive membership.